Stella XLM, so the CEO and co-founder, has now revealed the plans for vast space stations. Of course, this is very important because we do know that it is a collaboration with SpaceX, which is, of course, the company of Elon Musk. And Stella XLM is essentially doing the impossible, but they are making it possible because we should essentially be seeing this launch happening in early 2025. So we really don't have that long to go as of now. We will also be talking about the mass adoption and we do have a clip from the ETH Denver conference. In addition to this, we will also be looking at how Stellar XLM is essentially going to be meeting the real needs of real people. And of course, the price action of XLM token today. So all I ask from you are two things, which is to smash that like button and to subscribe to the channel as well. So if you don't already know about the mission of this, essentially what they're going to be doing with the vast space station is that they will be developing these artificial gravity space stations to expand humanity. So meaning that they're going to be getting humans to go across these other planets to see if we can actually live on there instead of just on Earth. And so it is going to be a massive achievement once they are able to do this. I personally think that we could be seeing a few people first going up and then exploring it to see how we live. So maybe some sort of like test pilot or pilot program to run it before we get more people. But this clip that we have over here between Danelle Dixon and Jed McCaleb is pretty interesting to know about some of the plans that they currently have as of now and with the current updates too. So yeah, so I mean, the, the, both of them are, are things that I've been kind of thinking about and wanting to do for a very long time. Uh, with, with FAST, which is um, essentially the goal there is, I, I think it's super important that people like um, get off the planet and out into the solar system and kind of start expanding where humans can live. Um, and you know, Just before you get into it, why do you think that's important? Uh, well, yeah, because basically, um, you know, if you imagine this world where there's like millions of billions of people living in, in space, I mean, I think it's like, not only is it economically better, like there's a lot of resources up there and energy and stuff that we can harvest. And like, it's like, you know, like in terms of just like GDP, it's worth it. Right. But, but also I think psychically it's better because people need a frontier, right? We just haven't had a frontier for a very long time because the earth has been all explored. And if you don't have that, then the world starts feeling very zero sum and, and, uh, and I think it just leads to all kinds of like bad outcomes, like with people psychically, like they, you know, they start thinking about degrowth and like the war start and all this kind of stuff. Like it's just bad, right? So, so having a frontier, which we've had for most of human civilization, is like I think super important and kind of the way we're wired. So, in order to, to get that back again, I think it's important. Um, and so, yeah, so I, I think I, I've, I've wanted that for a very long time and kind of always like jokingly said, like if I was ever super successful, <clears throat> you know, I'd go like mine asteroids or whatever. And then, you know, uh, when I stepped back from Stellar, you know, there's been, SpaceX has made a huge um, uh, impact in, in kind of, in, in uh, the aerospace industry, like launch is like super, uh, it is like way, way cheaper than it was like you know, 20 years ago. Um, and so it may, it's making like a lot of things more possible. And so, um, <clears throat> you know, I kind of view like, again, like if I want this world where there's like a billion people living in the solar system, what, like, what is obviously that's far off, but like, what is this, what are the steps to get there? Getting mass cheaply to orbit is sort of the first one. And it seems like SpaceX is pretty much nailing that. And then the next step is like, how do you let humans live for a long period of time? Because, uh, there, if you're in uh low, if you're in like no gravity, uh, then that has really bad health effects. Uh, you know, you, you have bone loss, like there's weird problems with the retina, all these kind of things. Like you really, you really can't live up there for more than a year. Uh, and so if we want to do big, crazy things like mine asteroids or build Dyson spheres or whatever, we, we need, we need, uh, we need to solve human habitation, which isn't going to involve like giving them gravity, which, so like the, like we're kind of aiming at this like space station that will spin, uh, to provide artificial gravity so people can live up there for years uh, and, and you can have like much uh, much bigger populations up there. So, so yeah, so that's what we're doing. We're hopefully going to launch our first uh, module uh, at the end of 2025. Uh, it's the current plan, which is quite soon. So. Insane. I mean, comment down below if this would be of interest to you and if you would actually like to explore the solar system. Maybe I would for possibly one or two days, but I don't think that I would be living there at all. It just seems a bit far-fetched. But still, I do like the idea. And again, he has said that humans can only be living there for roughly under a year, but they are able to expand that capacity because, of course, you need that gravity. So they are currently working on that. Now, we do actually have the connection over here, as you can see in this article. So we have that Avast unveils the commercial space station plans with space agencies and civilians in mind. Of course, it's partnering with SpaceX and it is set to launch sometime after August 2025. 
that is what it's called the space station it is haven one and not only do we have elon musk but in terms of the space industry we also have jess bezos so amazon and richard Branson. and i do think that virgin are also trying to get commercial flights into space as well and so there is a lot of money that should be flowing within this industry we do have this video that came out from eth denver and it says over here the mass adoption hinges on financial access the stellar network makes it possible let's take a look at this awesome i think my perspective is a bit different which is um i think about access financial access as a really important thing and i think that if we want to build uh, financial instruments that uh, are inclusive and aim for people outside of this room in denver uh, then it's really important to build products that actually allow people to get in and out of them in regions that are kind of like less accessible uh, financial wise um, one thing that we did with uh, that we've been doing with stellar since our inception in 2014 is uh, building a global network of on and off ramps uh, one of them probably the biggest one is moneygram so you can actually walk into a moneygram in more than 400,000 locations around the world and turn cash whether it's like shekels or pesos or whatever to usdc on chain and from that uh whatever so you can actually uh as a well developer as a dap developer you can integrate with that and build like the seamless experience from uh, uh that goes from cash to, to DeFi. and i think that's really important to get mass adoption and of course accessibility is a major factor in this we do actually have that partnership with stella and moneygram in general but it is particularly important when it comes to these crypto ramps so we do have that on and off ramp of course being able to switch your fiat money to usdc and also converting that from any sort of currency and that is what is needed on these blockchain networks and the accessibility side of it comes down to the fact that individuals should be able to access this crypto market and also have the digital assets that they need in order for the conversion and the article that i'm going to show you right now also takes a deep dive into this it is actually by stella so the blockchain industry must build for the real needs of real people and by that whilst blockchain and cryptocurrency in general is very exciting especially the technical side of things we really need to understand and make sure that we are building all of this and providing the solutions for people to actually use and also have some sort of value from so this is from Tori and Tori is a senior product manager at the Stellar Development Foundation. We're just going to take a look at a few bits and pieces over here. You can see that products must be undeniably useful to be adopted by people in these environments. And she says over here that perhaps the biggest lesson learned from building and deploying blockchain products for the real world is that users care about how products benefit them, not about the tech underneath. And somehow the crypto industry is still figuring this out. We spend too much time advertising the blockchain equivalent of elevator pulleys and levers of all tech when we should be emphasizing value and function. And I think the reason as to why we are still seeing this in the cryptocurrency space anyway is because we are pretty new right compared with the stock market. And also we sometimes have to cater towards the institutional investors because of course they want to make a return on their investment. And in terms of the institutions in general, they also want to see how the technology works. Whereas when we're talking about the other side of consumers like retail, for example, you and I, and your everyday people, we just basically want to know whether or not, of course it's gonna give us a return, right? So we're kind of like institutional investors as well, but not on that big scale, but we also want to know how the technology is going to benefit us and why we should actually even use that technology in general. We're not really concerned about the technology behind it with all of the different layers and what's really going on. We don't have to get down to the nitty gritty side of things. And I do think that in terms of the crypto industry, it really is who you're targeting. And so they don't have to be selling us on the technology and the network. What they really have to be selling us on is how that network and technology is going to benefit us and improve our lives. And so she also says that she knows that none of her customers, mostly refugees in Rwanda, would say that they were sold by those inner workings. They use their wallet because it allowed them to send money to people in other countries, hold multiple currencies and avoid carrying cash across borders. Let the results speak for themselves meaning the practicality of it right so they know that they are able to send money to someone in a different country and also hold multiple different currencies so they don't only have to hold one and they don't have to carry cash on them anymore now because they are able to make that cross-border payment and she says that it is a learning curve to build it and deploying tech that can only be overcome with those human touches and i definitely think that it is very important for the builders to also understand as well and how it will be benefiting those real people and so again this is definitely something that we really need to hone into now and make sure that the people understand the advantages of the technology and how it will benefit them 
Stella has also come up with an update from their network. This is phase rollout of the smart contracts and it just left phase zero and entered phase one. So builders now deploying on the mainnet should keep in mind ledger limits. And remember that capacity is still limited in phase one to stress test the system under increased loads. So let's take a look at the different phases. So we have moved from phase zero, which is instability testing, which was a ledger capacity for Soroban transactions and it starts low. And then now we're into phase one, which is deploying a monitor. So ledger capacity for Soroban transactions is increased. Applications can begin deploying and testing on the minute. So when we are able to move on the mainnet, and so once we have completed phase one, we will then go into phase two, which will be the user ready mainnet, and anyone can deploy and interact with smart contracts. Ledger capacity will continue to increase. And so I do think that there might be a bit of a bigger gap between phase one and phase two. Let's take a look at the price action for Stellar XLM coin today. We are currently trading at 0.1341. So we are at a nice 13 cents. For the volume, we are down by 22.61% and we were trading at $209 million. In the earlier hours of the morning for today, we were trading at 0.1398, so we just touched below that 14 cent mark. But this is where we hit 14 cents on the 3rd of March on at 3.45 a.m. Pretty good stuff, right? Because my price target for Stellar XLM was 15 cents, but I didn't think that it would rise that quick as of now. For the one week chart, we are up by 15%. At the start of the week, we were trading at 0.1144, pretty good stuff. And then we went to 0.1237 on the 28th. We did make another jump to 0.1279 after we did take this dip. And then we saw this massive climb just happening between the 1st of March to the 2nd of March from 0.1246 all the way to 0.1332. So we hit that 13 cent range. We also hit 14 cents, which is pretty good stuff. So on the one month chart, we are up by a nice 20.65%. And basically we were trading at 0.1149 on the 24th of February. And now we have come up by two cents. If we do see a bit more upside, my price target for Stellar XLM is 15 cents. However, if we retrace back down again, I want to make sure that we are able to consolidate within the mid range of 11 cents. Guys, if you want daily Stellar XLM coin news, subscribe to the channel and like the video as well.